guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's the day after Christmas. I hope every one of you got everything that you wanted for Christmas. Um, I got pretty much well everything I wanted. I did ask Santa for a bushel basket full of $100 bills. I didn't find that under the Christmas tree, but there's always next year, right? Hopefully, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um, as I said in a previous video, what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be removing our brake booster and taking off some of the brake lines. Uh, at least it's going to the brake booster. We're going to try to get everything disconnected from the cab so we can go ahead and get the cab off here. And so that's our main point of concern for today. Just a couple updates for you guys. In my last video, the top five things you must consider if you own a Cummins project truck, I'll put the link up above here if you want to check that out. In that video, I talked about the importance of, of updating your transmission, and I've been in the process of doing so. I've been looking around. I know in the video I was leaning toward an automatic, but with my budget, that's really not feasible at this time to get the most bang for my buck. What I found is an NV4500 conversion kit for Midwest Transmission. Now what this kit entails is that it's basically a, it's swapping your Get Reg 360 for the NV4500. And what Midwest Transmission does is they modify your bell housing to fit up to your truck. So there's no adapter plate or nothing like that that, that you need to look for. Everything is included in the kit. and for just a regular kit is, I think it was around $2,200 just for your regular kit. Now, if you're going to be adding horsepower and stuff like that, then, then there's some modifications. They do the transmission, such as anodize the gears. They put a bigger input and output shaft. That costs a little bit more money. Um, if you're doing that, it's around $3,700, and that's without a clutch. However, the transmission is rated then for up to around 1,000 horsepower, so um, as far as the internal components. Now, when you're looking for a clutch for that kind of horsepower, that's going to run you probably another two grand. But you don't have to add the clutch right away. You can actually take the clutch out of the get reg and put into this conversion kit, and it will work for, you know, until you start really adding horsepower. Then you could just you know swap out your clutch and stuff like that, which is not a a terribly hard job to do. But you know, uh, would it be nice just to do it all at once? Of course it would. But you know, if you're kind of if you got that budget constraint that you're dealing with, then that's probably an option that could work for you. Um, it's the best option for me at this point. Uh, another thing that I want to bring up is in our last video we took apart the steering uh, shaft and steering column and my original plan was I wanted to update the steering shaft because there is a steering shaft out there that does away with the rag joint and uh, it's just like a direct connect. However, um, I'll show you here <coughs> and this is something that you'll have to look up on your truck to see if or if not that's an option for you. Now, at least in the 89s, you can see here that this is all one piece. This is welded. So you cannot remove this piece uh, to do away with the rag joint. In your later model trucks, I think it's 92-ish uh, and later, this is actually removable. You can just take this whole piece off and the uh, updated steering shaft will just, it'll have like splines here and you can just slide it over there. This is, doesn't have an option for that, so either A, I'll have to get a, another steering column, or B, just go back with the rag joint. I haven't really decided what I want to do with there because uh, it just depends on the cost of the steering column, really, when it comes to that. One other thing I wanted to bring up was um, the frame and the condition of the cab, which is, is, which is pretty rough. Um, I would really like to have an extended cab truck. Uh, I just think really they just look better. The, the wheelbase is a little longer. And if I'm going to be pulling this truck like I plan on doing, then the little added wheelbase is going to help. So I am currently in search of a extended cab frame and with an extended cab. 
with that being said, you know, if I can find one that's cheap and it's in my price range, uh, I will pull the trigger on it and I'll keep you guys updated, you know, if I do find one. In the meantime, we're just going to be pushing forward with what we have. I uh, talked to one of my good friends, Lucas. He is a, an extraordinary welder. He used to, you know, we were in the Marines together. He used to work and do some welding for me in the past on, on the farm and stuff. And, you know, he can take something to make it look like it's new. You, you couldn't even tell it's been welded. So I'm fortunate to have a friend like that that can help me out on this project. And I ran into him uh, last weekend and he said he would come over and take a look at the truck. And he could also have available to him like any metal that we need to fix this truck. He can get it for me and with, without a cost. So while we're searching for an extended cab frame, you know, he's going to be helping me. We're just going to go ahead and fix this one. And until the time comes, because who knows, you know, when that could be, you know, the, the availability of trucks are out there. It, it's hard to find. I, I've seen trucks out there, but they're wanting like six and seven grand for these trucks. And uh, I just don't want to spend that kind of money, you know, given that I've got something already. So while we're on the topic of frames, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about uh, the frames on, on these earlier Dodge trucks. Uh, you'll read possibly in a lot of forums that anything, any frame from like the 70s up to the 90s will work for, uh, for a Cummins, and that's not necessarily true. There are differences in these frames. Uh, some had a six inch channel, some had a seven and a half to eight, it depended on the model um, and even when they came out with the Cummins in the truck some of those frames were six inches and I think those like were around uh, maybe the 89 to 91 and a half model trucks that had the six inch frame and those had some failure issues so that that was the reason they actually beefed up the frame from 92 and later and those will have the seven and a half to eight inch frames now this particular truck is an 89 however it's a cabin chassis model so it has the seven and a half to eight inch frame and i measured this earlier and it's actually a seven and a half inch frame if you're searching for a frame to replace in your truck you know i would try to find one that's got the seven and a half to eight inch channel as opposed to the six inch i think i read that maybe some of the earlier gas trucks maybe had the seven and a half to eight inch channel for the frame. So just FYI and, and, and make sure you look for that. So as far as removing the brake booster and stuff, you're, you're gonna have to uh, take your master cylinder here. You're gonna have to loosen these up and drain your reservoir. I believe that's a 14 millimeter. Could be a 9 16 depending on how much of rust you got around your bolts. I did replace this master cylinder uh, several years ago. You can do so without removing the brake booster. I'm going to try to remove this all as one assembly. And then inside the cab, you'll also have these four bolts up here. I don't know actually if you can see it or not. But there's two here, and then there's two here. And those are also 14 millimeter. And then also over here, I believe that's like a 5 16 and then it's like a 9 millimeter or 10 millimeter right here. And that just holds this shaft in that holds your clutch pedal and your brake pedal. So you'll slide that out and then those pedals should fall down. And of course the throttle will disconnect that. I think that was a 9 16 so there's two bolts out in front of the firewall for that and then uh, remove the gear shifter here. This is kind of been welded. So instead of trying to take this clip ring out and, and pulling, pulling that out of the transmission, I'm probably just gonna grind that off and just take that off. And I believe that's a 14 millimeter or 15 millimeter there that for your four wheel drive. So let's start turning in some wrenches.
Hey guys, that's gonna wrap up the nice video. Uh, nothing super hard about removing your brake booster. The one thing that I would recommend is if you've got a buddy there to help you actually pull the booster out, uh, that could be really helpful. I had a piece of wood up there to try to hold it up as I took the nuts off and the block kind of fell down and uh, it made a little bit of a mess, but it wasn't nothing too bad. So nothing a little old drive won't fix. Coming up in our next video, one of the things that I'm going to do is remove the fuel tank. Uh, that's kind of a job I've been <laughs> wanting to do for a while, but I've been putting it off because it's got like a half a tank of fuel. So it's probably got like 10 to 15 gallons of fuel in the tank that I'm going to have to drain so we can drop the fuel tank. We're going to do that so we can start getting everything off of the frame in the rear of the truck so we can address the rust issues. Uh, like I said, Lucas is going to come over. He's going to help me with that. He's going to do some welding. So uh, excited about that. Um, like I said, Lucas is a first class welder. Hopefully he won't be too camera shy and uh, we can get some uh, shots of him actually welding and showing you the right way to weld a frame if you're going to do if you're going to go that route so anyways hope you guys had a merry christmas thanks again so much for tuning in uh, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and we will see you next time see you later